talking about that da, 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 it might be a good chance to talk about actually this um pretty good and pretty lengthy uh virgil um article that was on gq right let me see if i can find it now gq boom 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 so um again i'm not sure what's happening if like um if Virgil's having something or maybe it's a tie-in with the exhibition at MoMA. Oh no, exhibition at Chicago Gallery, right? Contemporary Gallery is happening. He's doing a whole retrospective. I'm not sure if it's a tie-in with that. But it seems like he's getting more and more media attention. It's fucking ramping up day in, day out. I'm not sure what the deal is in that regard. But anyway, um, this Matt, this huge article came out about Virgil on GQ Star magazine. I think he's a, he's a cover star in it too. It kind of, you know, maybe it was post the Off-White show, which wasn't my favourite. But in general, it kind of charts the history of Virgil through the perspective of his various friends, through his kind of, you know, inception from his career onwards, right? And again, it's a familiar story we've all heard. Like, in, it's not, there's no, no no real new information apart from some anecdotes of his youth and stuff, whatever. There's obviously a really nice picture here. I'm assuming this might be the Louis Vuitton studio, the Off-White studio. It's fucking gorgeous, actually. That's one thing you realize when you go to Paris. Paris is fucking beautiful right it's so gorgeous to the eye um you really forget how um aesthetically pleasing it is to hang around in paris and knowing the art and literature and cultural history of it it's just vibrant just fucking pouring through the streets right sitting outside a cafe and sipping your 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 mocha your coffee whatever it may be called and pretend to smoke a cigarette like i did during fashion week you feel fucking awesome right feel it gives you so much vitality you feel so alive i was sketching i was writing stuff like paris is one of the most amazing cities anyway um the aside of it being super expensive i think just in terms of energy alone and i can only imagine what it must feel like week in week out working there in your atelier in your studio um collaborating with your friends running around fashion week it must feel fucking cool but anyway this again doesn't there's no real in, new information for those of you that are familiar with the Virgil Abloh story but going on rolling onto the back of the um the thing we were just talking about from the 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 report the study that found that you know your network mattered more than your actual group of friends this story really charts it and shows it in plain sight because doesn't it? it goes through exactly who the people are the instrument in his life and everyone is somebody of some sort of prominence is some sort of somebody that um is um, an expert or a four or like a lead a, a kind of fourth a thought leader within their little niche so it seems like he's on purpose he's gone out of his way to surround himself with people who are you know inspiring and motivating and have their own sort of thing going on in the side of their space and what also he's done he's not only leached off for people he's also then when he's got in position he's also brought other people in position too and allowed them to then go and do cool things from photography from photographers to models to um consultants whatever it may be called he's kind of gone in He's kind of been the whole, you know, the name dropper, the DJ Khaled, whatever you might be called of streetwear and kind of gone in and got all these people to come around him and help. Then he's also gone in and when he's got in position, he's done the same for other people. That's the kind of, you know, the trickle on effect that he's kind of done, which is then goes to, it, go, it, it says a lot about explaining the, because again, you can judge his work for whatever you want to judge it as, but the amount of real genuine love and appreciation and kind of real friendship that comes, because people actually travel to go to his virtual shows, right? People don't always get invited there. People actually go on their own volition to go and hang out with Virgil, say hi, touch base, do the whole cultural uh, smooching thing because they really like him as a person, right? That goes to show just how valuable and how long and how far that thing can take you. Um, I think nowadays, especially in industry where we're in, where people can be cynical, they can, you know, they can have a chip on their shoulder. They can sometimes feel as if like, you know, because it was hard for them to get in because the gatekeepers were fucking annoying and they were, um, you know, they closed many doors on them that suddenly when they get in position, they're going to do even worse to other people coming up, right? It can it can be easy to think that way. But I think sometimes, it, I think so in life, especially nowadays with, you know, the rise in social media and the direct-to-consumer platforms that we have, I think it's, it's, it's within our best interest, right? people from the street where in fashion if we want to see this kind of industry flourish and really rise and really go to the next step it's been an interest to you know to provide a platform for these people to come whoever newcomers whoever they may be and give them opportunities to not hold them back to not close the door on them to open the gates and really let everyone through because what we've seen with the virgil thing he might not be the best designer we have on the market he might not be whatever you maybe think of him but i think what we've seen is a real shift right a real cultural shift happen right in terms of who gets these big jobs in terms of who becomes the person that everyone goes to right in terms of if they want something that's going to be culturally on point that's going to really resonate with people that nike 10 collaboration is probably going to go down in real history right regardless of what you may think of it right it's going to go down in history of somebody that was able to do a collection of that immense range right all at once, 10 shoes, drop them and they all sell out. That's fucking insane. 
Um, and obviously, and of course, like the other day, I saw this uh, this middle aged white dude wearing the wearing the white Jordan ones, right, the off white Jordan ones with like a grey um, checkered suit with a massive scarf over, like just white shoes on um, white trainers with the suit. I was thinking, fuck, that looks fresh, and that goes to show just how how far that shoe resonated, those collect that collection. It wasn't only worn by, you know, those Muppets that you see on complex mag complex videos, right? That stand outside Supreme and have, you know, they're decked head to toe with every sort of, every single logo under the sun. It's worn by everyday people that just want to wear like a cool little item that has a little bit of a um creative, artistic, cultural, um, you know, element to it that they can kind of slip in there without being too showy showy, right? Because if you wear a pair of what the dunks with a suit, everyone's gonna make you know your adult hype piece. But you wear a pair of off white Jordans with a suit, people are gonna think, oh, okay, who are you? What do you do? Do you know Virgil? Are you part of the crew? All that sort of stuff. There's a very there's a very nuanced thing. And that's something that you can't buy. And obviously it's something that he's able to do. But the point I'm saying is that if we let everyone in and if we're kind of um al allowing the conversation to change, right? And if we're allowing people to come in and if we're allowing um, um, the kind of gatekeepers to kind of do away and kind of, you know, stay on the sidelines, let people come in and let them prove their worth. If they're shit, they're going to die out anyway. It doesn't matter, right? That the next person that comes after Virgil is going to be the one. The next person that comes after that person is going to be the one. Like, it's it's just, it, again, I'm just thinking of the, I'm just thinking, because again, I was obsessed with Hiroshi Fujiwara. I was obsessed with finding out what Fraser Cook does. I was obsessed with finding out the people that are behind Gimme Five. I was obsessed with finding out, um, um, Nigo, um, Nigo's inspiration and buying fucking vintage um, a bathing eight books. I was obsessed with Tetsu at oh, W Tets. I was obsessed with this culture and finding out who these old these cultural architects were. Um, Aaron Bondro's impact, right? I was obsessed with all these people, and I just think of it from the perspective of a sixteen year old nowadays, right? If you're a sixteen year old kid now, wherever you are in the world, and you're seeing someone like Virgil leading, um, being the figurehead of uh, Louis Vuitton men's and having his own brand in Off-White and doing parties all around the world and DJing and doing collaboration with Ikea and Evian Water. Like, what the fuck must be going through your head? It must be an amazing time. Again, because I came up during a time where people were idolizing and wanting to really be, and wanting to be a, in wanting to be part of the whole um nike collab nike team right they wanted to be part of the nike energy energy marketing team that was the most coveted job on the scene right coveted job i say right no one was really um figuring out a way to become the next supreme people were really limited right like nah man you can't do that no one wanted to be the next baby name like oh you can't do that right no one wanted to be the the creative director of of christian dior no you can't do that but nowadays, this generation, they really think they can do that. They really think they could go in and be the, I don't know, the fashion director at Lama, like for real. Like they really do think that because they've got evidence of it, right? Pharrell's got a collaboration um, ongoing with Chanel. Like it's just this crazy world we live in nowadays. Heron Preston's got a complete runway collection, ready to wear collection that he does on the runway in Paris, right? He's backed by a massive uh, group, the New Guards group, right? In terms of production and <laughs> manufacturing. Somebody who I know personally and knew from the time that I knew him from wasn't necessarily a fashion kid right someone that's more of a an artist more of a cultural communicator suddenly translate that image um that kind of aesthetic and that taste level and, and and kind of channeled it into fashion and look how successful that's been it must be amazing being a kid nowadays you must honestly think there is literally no limitation to what you can do in this industry in the scene in this industry and i just think it's up to us of the older statements in the industry to not get too cynical, to not get too bitter. And because we haven't been, to, we haven't got to where we wanted to get to, to think, oh, we're going to shut the kids out. No, give them all the information you can give because the next person after the ones that are leading the head, leading the kind of race now, they're going to be the ones. They're going to be the ones. I, 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 Hammerson, I Hammerson have no doubt of it. The next, the next Virgil is going to be fucking amazing. Like imagine what Kanye is doing nowadays. Imagine what kids seeing what Kanye is doing and what they're going to do next. It's going to be fucking insane. It's going to be absolutely insane. And I can't wait to see the next of it. And again, I just think going on from the network, reading this whole Virgil article on GQ and seeing just how, you know, how highly, how, how highly some of his mates rate him, uh, the stories from his days in architecture, from the times he was doing streetwear with the Pyrex and off-white stuff, the story of the legendary picture of them outside Fashion Week when they went and gate crashed the Fashion Week. Again, lesson to be learned from that as well from kids, you know, don't always wait for an invite. Um, actually go to the places because again I, I see a lot of kids doing this nowadays on Instagram or social like contacting these people and reaching out to them and asking them to be interns and stuff through direct message don't do that like everyone does that that's a fool's errand right you can easy to kind of sit at home and just type stuff make something right if you hear someone's doing something they've got collaboration coming up make them a deck um, I don't know send them a t-shirt um, 
I don't know, um, go to a fashion where you can bump into them in real life at a party and exchange some conversation. Uh, talk to them in real life. Like, really get to know people or just be around as well. Don't talk to people. I was, um, I'm a big proponent of just not saying anything. When I was in the scene in the beginning, I didn't say jack shit. I had a blog that was kind of quite popular at the time, but I didn't say anything. I just, I just stayed in my own little zone. And I just soaked up the environment. I just soaked up all the game that was around me. I just soaked it all up. I was just made, uh, mostly a, a, perspect, uh, uh, a spectator. And then once I thought I had something to say, I then started participating in it. But it's not always advantageous to kind of go out and automatically ask for something and kind of draw and kind of extract value. Try and give some value. Just try and be someone that is cool to hang out with, which again is hard to, it's hard to find. If you go, if you kind of read between the lines of um, that Meek Mill tweet that he made uh, post the Rock Nation brunch about um, the, like, you know, SMH, about the things that he saw people were willing to do in order to kind of get that Jay-Z picture, right? Because Jay-Z and Beyonce were there. And of course, everyone was fucking trying to flick up a picture with Jay-Z. So it was like, oh, he, he saw people like lose it all to get that Jay-Z picture, right? Which, are, which uh, led you to believe that, you know, people kind of embarrass themselves in that situation. People do it a lot more often than you think, right? In those kind of situations when they're in amongst these people that they idolize, the people that have the star factor or they want to get a bit of the rub on them. Get, sorry, they want to get a bit of the rub on that people. People can be a bit weird to hang out with. They can be a bit, I don't know, just annoying, right? Laugh at every joke. Um, get overly involved, ask too many questions, like just, just shitty company. Sometimes just being cool and just hanging around is going to get you a long way. Um, again, so this story kind of really kind of d digs in deep with it. It's a really good oral history. Again, I'm not sure what this is tying into, if there's a bigger play at, at hand or if this is just a precursor to Virgil's um, retrospective um, exhibition that's coming up very, fairly soon, I think. But I highly recommend you check it out, especially for the kids that are really um, interested in trying to get into the industry. I think, by and large, the best way you can do these things, especially for me, having idolized people like Hiroshi Fujiwara, Aaron Bondaroff, Nigo at Baby Nape, is what you, or James JB at Supreme. The best thing you can do is read interviews. Read as many interviews as you can with these people. They're not they're not hard to find. Go and Google, type in their name, interview, soak up as much information as you can, and essentially just copy what they did. Copy the path they did, not copy the work, copy the path. So if you hear somebody reach out to somebody when they were 18 and try to get an internship, try and do that. If somebody started printing off 30 t-shirts and gave them to friends and then that's how they got started do that if somebody started a zine do that if somebody started djing do that whatever it is start doing those things just work through them and then suddenly throughout the working through those things you'll find your path because sometimes a lot of people ask oh what do you what do i do i want to get involved i want to start this i want to start that i can't tell you what to do it's really hard to me to tell you what to do in a situation because it's a very personal journey right it's not something that anyone can tell you how to do you have to kind of go through it yourself but it doesn't it sounds like someone's fobbing you off when they say that but it's a real truth like i can't tell you how you're going to navigate yourself through the industry you can have to figure it out what else you get in there and again, the best way you can do it is by reading these interviews. And this article from GQ, again, you see the whole anthology. Do you remember how much um, controversy or how much stick Virgil got for this flannel? I don't think it's something he would do again because I think a lot of the reason why people hate Virgil, again, in my opinion, comes from that flannel. I think if he didn't do that flannel and he just kind of made that, and imagine you take, take that flannel out, even though, or let's let's price the flannel at the price it probably should be, right? Not $400. Um and, th and this is pre vetemar too, right? This is pre vetemar era of things. The Vetema, you know, at least with Demna, he came from the school of uh, Martin Margiela. He, he redesigned the hoodie. So essentially, he kind of changed the silhouette of a hoodie for the most part. Um, but Virgil tried to sell us a, a rugby flannel with Pirates print on the back for $500. And people weren't having it. And again, he's, from, all, from, from what it seems like, I don't know if people are just doing it because he's important, he's the main guy. He seems like a good person. People actually like Virgil as a person, right? So I assume most of the reason why people hate him was because of that, was because of that, that shirt. And I wonder if you'd do it again nowadays. I wonder. Probably not. But again, I, I digress. Read through it. This Again, this is a... A, a visual history of his entire catalog and what he'd done and how he got into the industry. And again, look, look at the contrast between that, right? That that Pyrex vision line leading essentially to that off-white collection. I think that might be the, is that a debut collection that I saw in Paris? That might be, isn't it? With the yellow, yeah, that might be it, actually. That might be it. The the yellow, the one that I saw where um, Ian Connor went and jumped on Virgil's back or no, or they ran out together during the runway. But anyway, I recommend you check it out. It's a really good um, article. Um, Loads of really interesting people that kind of lend their voice to the whole Virgil story. And again, loads of people that kind of feel invested in the fact that he's winning as well. That's another big thing. So again, like I say, you can't always depend on your talent. You also have to marry your talent with the people that you surround yourself with. And, you know, it's within your interest to kind of go out there, put yourself out there and kind of absorb game and, you know, touch base with people and just generally be someone cool to hang over someone that people can say, oh, yeah, you do that thing. 
I find it very difficult to do. Whenever someone brings up the, the DJing thing or the art thing or the writing thing, I don't necessarily say anything. Right? I don't necessarily go out there and tell people that I do these things. I just hope that they kind of, you know, realize over time, which again, is I'm not really taking my own advice, but I can't necessarily do that thing. It's not very good. I'm not very good at self-promotion in real life. Uh, maybe on the internet I am, but not in real life. But I guess if you are that person, you don't have as much social shame as I do. I think it's within your interest, especially if you want to make it in industry because there's so many opportunities out there. There's so much, um, you know, money to get there's so many opportunities so many chances for you to kind of really get your art out there to the biggest group of people i think really urge yourself to try your best to get out there get in public go to art gallery openings go to store openings um wherever they may be all these cultural events freeze whatever especially if i was a kid nowadays i always say if i was a kid nowadays i'd i'd um i'd work retail and i'll just save up a bunch of money fuck the festivals right unless they're a couple of key ones that i know some seen people go to and i save all my money and i do like a, an influencer tour an influencer event kickoff like freeze um i go to moma i go to I, I go to new york art book fair i'd try and go to some fashion week attend it and just be around the mix and be around and see if i can go to an after party i'd try to go to paris fashion week especially for men's i do all these things especially just save us some money and just go for the weekend and just hang out that probably the best way for you to kind of get forward, I think, in, in especially not just relying on your talent. That's probably not the best way to do it. Again, only IMO.